Lord God, we want to glorify your name and your name alone, all the earth. As we sing the name of Jesus, you are the way maker. You are the one that makes the way for us, that leads us down the path you want us on, especially when we get off the path. It's so easy, Lord, to, to veer off, but you keep bringing us back to you. Father God, may we focus our hearts and minds on you today. And all God's people said, amen. Thank you, worship team. Well, good morning. Is everybody awake? Excellent. Hopefully I don't put you back to sleep. So, today, I have been wrestling once again all week. I said, Lord, what do you want me to talk about? Talk about this week because because I think I get something in mind and I'll get going on something. The guy goes, no, 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 no. We're going to take you down this road. So um, thankfully, he took me down the road way earlier this week than he did last week. So I praise him for that. But today we are going to get back to the basics, back to the basics. And the reason I'm calling that today, because I've had a lot of conversations with a lot of people lately and consider. During the time we are living in right now, conversation seems to hold a lot more weight. People are seeking more depth, and they are hungry for the truth. One of the big questions that comes up is this. Why are so many young people leaving the church? Or you could even ask, why are people leaving the church, period? Is it the praise songs? Is it the hymns is it the programming well guess what COVID-19 took all of that from us for a while and so we we started to discover what we were missing missing getting together missing being in the same room together and and listening to God's word so then I started to think what is what is it going to take to bring people back into church and we're not doing so bad today, I would say. It's good to see so many faces, and, and even we've been seeing a lot of new faces and some familiar faces. Right now, our media and government has created within us a culture of fear. This is true. A lot of people are scared, and we do not make, we're not making, I'm not making light of people who are legitimately scared of the coronavirus, because we all know it's real. We no one here denies that whatsoever. So naturally, there are a number of people who are fearful to even come back to church because they're afraid of catching the virus. And I get that. And I don't ever rem and remember when we first opened our doors, the biggest thing we wanted to make sure we said to people is, don't feel like if you don't feel safe, then don't come. It's okay. We still love you. And we're not going to judge you for that shame on us if we do okay i get it and um we're taking the precaut as many precautions as we can we offer masks to those who need masks we've got hand sanitizer we're spreading out the rows so we're taking steps we're taking those steps and we're doing our i feel that we're doing our part i know for some of you, and may probably many more of them have spoken to me about it, it is inconvenient. But sometimes getting up in the morning is inconvenient. <laughs> sometimes traffic is inconvenient. So deal with the inconvenience. Be happy and praise God that we're together and able to do what we're doing. Um, and that's this is not how I got to make sure I don't turn this into a soapbox because that's not what this is. But... COVID-19 has taken away all our programming for a while. And, uh, but God made a way for some of us to still meet via the internet. Um, every day, well, not this week, but most weeks I have been on um, almost every day sharing a message, a short devotion um, on Facebook. Uh, many pastors have been doing, in fact, thousands of pastors have flooded the internet with messages so you can't go to the internet and 
not have some kind of church pop up, at least in your feed. There's always something going on. There's always a message happening. And believe me, pastors across the country are doing their best to keep serving the people, to serve ultimately the Lord, and getting that message out there. And that, but still, unfortunately, left out a lot of people who do not have internet. And we have a lot of people in our church who don't have internet, they don't know how to work computers, they don't have Facebook, all that stuff. So even then, they they don't get as much. Hopefully, uh, I know some people have been watching, like, what, what do you guys watch when you're not at church? Um, what's his name? Charles Stanley. Thank you. That's who I was thinking of. I was like, He's a great pastor to listen to. I love Charles Stanley. Um, I also listen to some of his son's stuff. Um, so there's ways of hearing the word, but it doesn't, as much as and as wonderful as, as it is and as thankful as we are, it doesn't make up for being here with all of you wonderful people. It really doesn't. It's, it's different. It's, there's just something different about it. So that leaves us with even another question is how do we keep the church doors open why keep the church doors open why don't we just keep doing it online i mean it's easier i mean it was real i mean honestly it wasn't that hard for me to sit it was weird you want to talk about weird set my laptop up here i got my stool and i'm just talking to the screen and here's this big empty room i'm in because i was trying to create the whole you know here we are we're in the sanctuary but it still isn't the same, man. It's bizarre. And, uh, it, you know, it took me some getting used to. And then you get all the, the, the technical difficulties that happen. And um, so what is the purpose of meeting in church together here in this building on Sunday morning? Some say it is for the fellowship of believers. I would say yes to that. Amen. That's definitely part of it. But I also believe it is so that you can be equipped so that you may go out and preach the gospel. That is the purpose. When you come to church, my job is to equip all of you to go out and preach the gospel. Okay? That's what the church is for. We're, we're to go out there and share it with people who don't know Jesus or don't have a relationship with them. Now, we have people who will come in and don't have Jesus yet. That's awesome, because then you get to hear the gospel. And so when I am talking about getting back to the basics today, I'm getting back. I want to get back to simply preaching the gospel. Not that we don't ever preach the gospel, but we get into it deeper. And uh, But I think even that, if you want to get deeper, that's what Bible study is for. Bible study is so that you can dig in and start getting the meat out of that, out of God's word. And so that you can, and that's what helps you to grow as a believer. So what seems to be the biggest issue that people are having with churches today? Now, this is stuff that I've watched online, gotten off the internet. I've had conversations with different people. I've talked to people who left churches or left the church. One of the biggest issues is that pastors are not taking a stand on what we say we believe. That leads me to the thought of asking myself, am I standing on what I believe as your pastor? What, what keeps them from coming or what keeps coming back to all these conversations? is this. Faith and Christianity has become fluffy self-help meetings. I want to make you feel good. I want you to feel so good about yourself. You're doing great. You can do it. Right? No. We can't do it. In fact, every time we think we can do it, what happens? You get knocked down a peg. You hit the wall, you, you fumble, you trip, you fall, 
you hit the same wall over and over again because we think that there's something that we can do that's going to make us more worthy of heaven. And it doesn't work that way. Churches have become designed more for our entertainment and not truly worshiping the Jesus we say we believe in. Now, that doesn't mean we can't do modern worship songs. Yes, we're going to do modern worship songs. Yes, we are going to do hymns. Yes, but you know what? The whole point of any song when you sing it in church is what? Not the worship. So point your heart to Jesus. Not how much you like the music, not how perfect it sounds, but to worship Jesus, whether you sing on key, whether you don't sing on key, whether you're a magnificent musician or not, if the point is, is that our heart needs to be to give Jesus the praise. Amen? Amen. I think we pastors need to pray and agonize it's more over what we preach in the pulpit on Sunday morning. And I think COVID-19 has helped me to do that a little bit more. And don't think that I have, I don't, I want to say that I've got it. I've, I'm all there and that I've got it all together. He's working on me. He's working on you. He's working on every one of us. And we're being stretched and we're getting uncomfortable. And guess what? When you get uncomfortable, you're in a good place. Because that's right where God wants you. Okay, the minute, the more comfortable we get, well, this is how we've always done it. I'm sorry. Jesus doesn't work that way. Jesus takes the way we've always done things and goes like this. Remolds it. And, and, and then we get real uncomfortable. Sometimes we get angry and mad and frustrated because it's not going exactly the way we think it should go. But God says, you need to go the way I want you to go. Right? Last week, I was wearing that freaky mask. I know, it ticked a couple people off. I know it. And it looked like, I looked like the, I did, I looked like the Taliban. One guy, one person said I looked like a thug. I says, all I needed was my sideways hat and I'd be ready to go to the bank, right? But I felt like God wanted me to put it on that day. Sorry. And it's the only mask that I can actually breathe in. And my wife bought it for me, so I put it on. And obviously, I don't feel that conviction today. And that's okay. It's where God puts you. It's what God lays on your heart. So, people are screaming, though, for the gospel. They really are. They're actually asking, what is this stuff? What is this Jesus thing you guys keep talking about? What is, who is this Jesus that you say you believe in? So the question is, are we giving the truth or are we giving a bunch of fluff? Because if I'm giving you a bunch of fluff, then I'm not doing my job. So today isn't to help make you feel happy about yourself. It's to, to give you the truth. I really want to press in to the truth. And we will start with a story. There was a guy back in the 1960s. We'll see if some of you guys can remember who I'm talking about. But he had a speech. His speech, he was, let's see, he started off as a high school football coach and went right into being um, the head coach of the Green Bay Packers. 1958, my football trivia guys are in the audience today. They can correct if I'm wrong. But he was getting frustrated because his team was not playing up to their potential. And so... Have you figured out who it is yet? All right, tell me who it is. Vince Lombardi. I'm going to read you a short story about Vince Lombardi. And it says Vince Lombardi had had enough. Now, this is a devotion that somebody wrote. Um, in his first year as coach, 
of the Green Bay Packers. He was frustrated by the performance of us football players. In, in true Lombardi, Lombardi form, he blew his whistle and yelled, gather around, to his players. He held up a football, pointed to it, and said, gentlemen, this is a football. Coach Lombardi knew that without a firm foundation of the basics of the game, his team would never be successful. For the Green Bay Packers, winning started with the basics. The turnaround was stunning in his tenure as the coach of the Packers. He won four NFL championships and the first two Super Bowls. I think of this story often. This is the guy writing it. I think of this story often after talking with believers who tell me they've had enough with their Christian lives. They are weary, frustrated, and burned out. The first place I take them is back to the basics of Christianity. It is the God gospel message and the gospel message only that leads to a life of faith and freedom add to it or take away from it and you are left with no gospel at all it is jesus christ his death burial and resurrection that is the only message that matters can i get an amen on that in the simple truth of God's love and grace, you will find peace and rest and the power you need for victorious living. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is a Bible. Some of you have these on your phones. I'm okay with that. Some of you have a different translation than me. I'm okay with that. The message doesn't change. God does not change. And he's been around forever. So, this is going to be our greatest offensive tool we are going to need to get through the next few days, the next few weeks the next few months this right here is our greatest tool it is our most offensive weapon this thing this book offends people it's offensive i want to see you getting into it think about it praying through it asking questions about it those are good if you got questions about this i would love for you to come and ask me because I love answering the questions. And if I don't have the answer, I love looking for them with you. I love it. I love it. That is what your pastor is here for. Okay. Or if you have someone else you trust even more than your pastor and you have a good friend who you guys dig in to the word with, then dig in to the word of God. Ask those questions, seeking God's face over it. Be because, believe me, with what we are facing in our world right now, you absolutely need the Bible. Let's get to work. John 14, starting at verse 1. Charge! Just kidding. It might not be later, though. John 14, verse 1. We're going to get back to the basics. Everybody there? Close enough? Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. This is Jesus talking. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself 
that where I am, you may also be. And you know the way to where I am going. Then Thomas, good old Thomas, piped in, said to him, Lord, we don't know where, you're, where you are going. How can we know the way? Best line, best comeback ever. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. You have, if you have known me, you would have known my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Mic drop. Jesus had it. Jesus is it. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one you don't get there by Buddha. You don't get there by Krishna. You don't get there by what, whatever else. Jesus said, hands down, and this is what we hold. This is the word of God. I am the way, the truth, and the life. So we need to get back to the basics, right? Because this is, this is what people are actually asking for. They are asking for the gospel. And so one of the best ways somebody ever showed me the gospel gospel and i know some of you might be familiar might be familiar with this technique have seen this and i'll try to make so everybody can see it i wonder if i back to the basics get back to it right so as any of you who have ever seen me do now i'm not doing it right away i'm going to start with since i'm in a football mode this morning whenever I do a wedding okay I have to get my brain around it logistically to a certain degree you, you need the spiritual part of it it's very important obviously but when you're getting down to I get down to my last um, bit of counseling with a couple we got to get into logistics mode before we get to the first rehearsal because the rehearsal that's where you, you, you work out all the kinks and the bugs. bugs. So I'm like, okay, so over here we got the, got the bride, got the groom, got the pastor. You figure, all right, how many people, what's, what would you say would be average wedding party? Three, six? Let's say three on each side, right? So you got one, two, three, one, two, three. Some are bigger, some are smaller, right? So then you got, you got the mom. I'm in the dad over here, and the ushers, you bring them in, you get them seated, you get the other moms and dads, they're seated, you bring them in. And so what you want to do, obviously, the dad is going to walk the bride down the aisle, and we have our ceremony right here for a touchdown, right? I mean, <laughs> that's the basics, though, right? I mean. I mean, if you were to break it down, take away all the, all the scripture I read and the prayers we pray and the things we say and the vows and all of that, that's the base of a wedding ceremony torn down or stripped down to its basics. So with Christianity, we strip it down to two things here, Okay. Who's over here? Us. We're over here. I'm not doing artistic anything. So I'll put us. Okay? And what do we have over here? God. He's far more majestic than this. Okay? And what do we have here? What's, what's in between? us and God. There's a big space, right? And yeah, let's call that sin. Right? And what happens if you try to get to God on your, let's say, hey, I helped three, four, or five people this week. Um, I prayed for a bunch of people this week. Um, I did all this great stuff 
I did all this stuff for God. I'm going to get to God, right? I'm going to get to heaven, right? On my own merit. What happens? So what we're doing is we're trying to jump across this chasm, right? Sorry. Trying to jump across the chasm on our own by doing a bunch of what? Good works, right? So we're like, yay, I'm doing good. Oh, that didn't go so well. Why? You can't. Why not? I can't be good enough for God. I'm not good for God. Why, why am I not good enough? Oh, that's true. <laughs> I'm not Jesus for one, right? And so every time we try to jump across the chasm on our own, we still have sin, right? And we still mess up. Um, yeah, I was helping somebody out, but boy, somebody cut me off, and I had a few words for that guy. Let me tell you what. Right? And when you have those few words for that, whoever cut you off in traffic, sin. Right? Oh, somebody, um, let's see, uh, my husband or wife didn't put away their socks again. Sin. And it's his sin, too, for not putting away the stops. Um, okay? So every time we jump across, this is the basics. Okay? This is the gospel. Nothing we can do is ever going to get us over here with God. Right? right? But we had someone who was able to do it, don't we? Because, and, and, and this is the really, really cool part. See, we had this awful, terrible thing that happened to Jesus, right? Jesus comes into the world. He does his ministry for three, three and a half years. And his whole sole purpose was to go to that cross and die. But that wasn't it, was it? Because if Jesus just died on the cross and nothing else happened, then what? Get nothing. He's just another martyr. It doesn't mean he was just a really nice guy who could preach real good. I mean, well, right? That's what he would have been. He would have been a, like the carpenter's son. However, Jesus went to that cross and he died for us. And all Jesus does from this point, now this is because. Because he died on that cross and he rose again, defeating death, we all are saved. Simply by believing in him. We talked about what you believe about God last week. But simply by believing and following Jesus. That's it said this before and it always raises eyebrows when I say it. There's going to be a lot of jerks in heaven. It's true. It's true. Because it's not based on how perfectly nice we are to everybody. Now, does that mean go ahead and keep being a jerk all the time? No. We have to constantly work on that because we still struggle with sin. But now we have a way to overcome sin Jesus Christ. You have to even do more than believe in him. You have to follow him. Okay? Because the be demons believe and they shudder. The demons believe in Jesus because they know he's real. They know how powerful he is. And I don't have all my references on the top of my head for this one because they some of these come real quick, but there there are times where Jesus is teaching and preaching and the Demons are saying, we know who you are. Get away from us. Leave us alone. Right? And they shudder at Jesus' mere presence. Why? Because they know, believe, like you said, that he is God. We talked about that last week. Jesus being the human form, the incarnate part of God. And so because if you choose to follow Jesus, 
you now have that bridge to God. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get back to the basics. Okay, for those of you watching on Facebook or Zoom, that's it. That's it. Now, does he leave you right there? Is it just all of a sudden, all right, I got Jesus now, things are going good. The the all the flowers are blooming now, the birds are tweeting, people are tweeting, everything's going great, right? No. It doesn't get easier. It's better. It doesn't get easier. And that's why we have our most powerful tool, the Word of God. I'm going to be gone next week, and you're going to hear from Bill next week. And he's going to share something with you. But when I come back, I'm going to get in, into more of this. We're going to talk about what the Bible is. We're going to get into the basics of what God is trying to get across to everyone. Folks, if you've heard this a thousand times, good. Because Jesus wants us to keep hearing this and he wants us to share it. There was a time when I had no clue how to even do all this as I just did it. Okay? And I'm not saying you're a bad Christian if you don't know how to do this. That's okay. You need to find what's going to work the best way for you to share Jesus with others. Because there's a lot of people, I'm sorry, I'm not sorry to say this, this is the truth. There's a lot of people going to go to hell if we don't. There's going to be a lot of nice people, sweet people, going to hell. Oh, simply because they don't have Jesus. That is the basics of Christianity. You want to break it down. That's it. Somebody gave me a t-shirt. It was really kind of funny. I, 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 I got to lose some weight before I can fit into it. But it just says, y'all need Jesus. And I love it. It's a funny shirt and I love it. We all need Jesus. That is how we get to God. What did he say? I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Period. As the worship team comes up to do our last song, um, I don't do a, a, an altar call where you get to get up in front of people. I want you to really think about it. I do... I want, if this is something that has penetrated your heart and you're wrestling with this, man, I'd be happy to talk with you and pray with you about it. But it's up to you what you do with it. It's up to you, what, you know, what this all means. It's not you. You don't have to take my word for it. It's all right there. It's in the book. It's all right here. Or we whatever version you have, but it's there. And that doesn't change. Remember that. So I encourage you, if you've not chosen to follow Jesus yet, I encourage you to start doing that. Ask him to be the Lord of your life. It's not. The, the first steps aren't hard. What comes down the road gets hard. But look at the community of believers you have to walk with for the friends you have who love Jesus from the family. Amen? Amen? Share Jesus with somebody. Find a way. Ask God for opportunities to open that door to share Jesus and maybe even bring that person with you next week. I pray for you now. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. The Lord be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. And all God's people said, amen. Have a good week.